And you think um, 1958, moving to South Beach, engaging in sports, eventually becoming a coach, expanding the horizons of what social paradigms were standard then, which we'll get to in a second. Yeah. You, you still feel that that is carried with you? Oh, it's a part of me. Yeah. You know, I mean, my birthday was recent. And, Happy um, birthday. Man. Well, yeah, it's passed, but, you know, thank you. Sure. And, and who, who calls me on my birthday? But the kids I coached in high school wow. in the 70s and, and the early 80s. <laughs> the, you know, my players. Yeah. Hey, coach, how you doing? Happy birthday. Wow. So I've still remained friends with them. You know, um, I had some interesting, you know, we had some, again, some great teams hmm. when I coached basketball. We were the first team from Staten Island ever to make it to the city championship game because Staten Island, you know, you're playing against the Bronx mm. and Brooklyn, <laughs> and, you know. So we ended up playing D. Wick Clinton in the city championship game. We were 23 and 0 going in, and Clinton had 6,000 boys, and my high school had 600. Jeez. So you can imagine the competition we were up against. Yeah. And we lost by six. Oh. But that year we were rated in the top 20 in the country. So those players are lifelong friends. Wow. And they call you every year wishing they you call me birthday. every year. And I, I and I there was some things I wrote about in the book that mm -hmm. that, that uh, stay stay will stay with me a lifetime. At one point, I remember we had just finished a, an undefeated season, 20 and 0. And the principal called me down to the office. Mm -hmm. And uh, congratulations, you know. 20 wins, no incidents during the games and, or after the games. And I said, great. And at that time, they wanted to move the school to where it was on the North Shore near the Staten Island Ferry into the Mid-Island section where the high school became available. The old New Dorp High School had a new high school, so that old one became available. And they wanted to go down there. But I, most of the kids on my basketball team were African-American. Mm -hmm. So the principal looked at me, congratulations. So then he said to me, we have one problem. If we, you, know, you have too many African-American kids on your basketball team. I was floored. I was floored. And I coached my kids. They never got into trouble. You know, when we went to, to play games, they had suit and a tie. Yeah. You know, they all doing well in their classes. And... The reason is they were getting a lot of hate mail from the mid part of Staten Island oh, wow. that they didn't want all of these African American kids to come to the mid island section of the island because it was predominantly white. Mm -hmm. So that that was that was a, a real dilemma, you know. And uh, you stuck to your guns. Well, yeah, but I, <laughs> I became the bad guy. You know, they they would have these meetings with the athletic department to try to think how they can overcome this issue oh really you know of, and and i used to say you know i don't see them as african-american right i don't care if they're pink blue green indian white i i judge them on their talent and their character right and that's all i want to do you know but as it turned out mm. um, they, they you know they made the move and uh, you know they they just they they because the perception, because our team was so successful, the perception of the school that I was coaching at was it was predominantly a black school. In reality, it was only 15% black. Hmm. But I created a perception, as much of a positive one as it was, Right. they wanted something that was whiter. <laughs> uh, that's um, In that moment, did you feel that the things that you were working for led you to this opportunity to become the leader that you respect? Yeah, I think so, because I, I stood up for the kids. Right. Uh, I realized who was uh, going to support me and had my back, which yep. was, you know, not too many people. People, lot, I was disappointed in a lot of people that, that didn't come and support what I was trying to do and what I was trying to say. Right. And uh, I lost a lot of friends over it. Wow. Maybe not so much friends, right? Probably not. Yeah. But I, the, the kids who I coached in those years, they remain my friends 30, 40 years later. So it's interesting to think about the time you spent with said friends. How many years 
until its conclusion. Yeah. And yet now, how many years later, yeah. have you still affected those that were working with you as your athletes? They right. still call you. Right. So you chose the right ROI. I think so. <laughs> I think. But I just wanted to mention that that was part of my coaching career. Right. And I had to battle racism right. on top of trying to do a good job as a coach.